Good day, everybody. Thank you for joining. So we're going to talk about Spectrum Protect Family and how to cover and address the different cyber attacks. If you look at some of the known concerns raised by the World Economic Forum and the Identify Global Risks, what is very telling is that cyber attacks is the third risk identified by these large economies, these companies, these countries. And it's not just about ransomware. It's about you know, state-sponsored types of attacks. It's about infiltrators. It's about insiders. We have a history of organizations losing billions of dollars, and it's getting so prevalent that one way or another, every organization should expect to be attacked whether it's ransomware, the WannaCry, the NoPetya, or whether it's a dedicated attack by either state-sponsored or just people looking to cause some sort of anarchy or someone is just looking for a, a different payday. We have big risks that are from insiders. One in four, in many cases, is in some way associated with an insider, whether they've been actually working maliciously or they're working on behalf of someone unknowingly because they think that they're receiving legitimate instructions. So let's go ahead and look at doing a demonstration. We're going to focus on recovery of a ransomware attack. I have Spectrum Protect Plus. I'm going to go ahead and show a pretty simple recovery of a corrupted virtual machine that's running as a file server. If I go out and look at my vSphere infrastructure, I've got a server. It's called it's Windows 2012 file L file server. And we're going to assume this has been corrupted. It's been attacked. The data inside of it has been encrypted. I'm not going to delete the VM. I'm going to go ahead and rename it. I'm going to go ahead and do a vSphere recovery. I'm going to navigate down, find my different recovery points. And here's my Windows 2012 file L VM that's been backed up. I can bring back different disks and things of that nature, but I want to bring back the entire machine. I don't trust the most recent recovery point. I'm going to go back one recovery point, and you can go back as far as you need to. In this case, I have a copy of this in my local snapshot repository and also a replica in my remote snapshot repository. I'm going to recover from my local copy. Once I've selected what I want to recover, and we I want to change some of the recovery options. In Spectrum Protect Plus, I have the options of doing a test restore. And that's very interesting in this use case because this is actually running from the snapshot. I am not going to move any data into the production data store until I validated that this is a good, clean recovery point. It is not infected. Once I validated that, I can promote it to either production, which moves it back to the original name and the original location, or a clone, so I can give it a different name. I can go to an alternate location. This allows me to change different things. I'm going to choose a different host than it was in production. When doing this restore, you do not want this to be placed on the production network immediately. Remember, this file server was attacked typically from corrupt endpoints. Someone individual or some group of individuals has a ransomware virus that, that Trojans running on their machines and it corrupted this file system. There also may be corruption on the file system itself, so I want to patch this before I move it back to a production environment. I don't want this to be exposed until I've done the necessary work to make it safe. Originally, I had this joined to two different networks, the data network and the DMZ network. When I do move this back, I want to go back to the original location when I go to production. But while this is running in test, I want it to be on a different network. I'm going to put this on the management network. From a data protection specialist, the member of the backup team, once this is started, I hand it over to the security people, the OS people, and say, do what you have to do. Tell me when you want this promoted to production. When it moves over, I'll go ahead and use the original network settings. I'm going to put this back to the, the same data store. It doesn't have to. And I'm going to tell it what folder to put this in. So I'm going to have this powered on. Once again, this is from the vSNAP repository. This is not from the production data store. 
until we move it, until we've validated this is a good recovery point, you know, this is a restore eval. Once we move it over, we can go ahead. If we want, we can rename it. And I don't have to even do that now since I renamed the original. I'm going to save these settings, and I'm going to click Restore. If we go over to these centers, but you can see that it's creating that VM. This is a very fast process. We're not restoring anything. It's already powering this machine on. This is basically what we call an instant restore because at this point, we're running it from the snapshot repository. So I can start this, and this will take a few seconds. So as you can see, this is the running OS. At this point, I'd hand it over to the security team and say, you know, do what you need to do. I'll validate that the data has not been corrupted. Apply whatever patches you want to. It's essentially a sandbox, isolated environment right now. Once they get those tasks complete, I can return to Spectrum Protect Plus, and you can see that it tells us this is active. In other words, it's running from the, the snapshot repository. So when we do these restores, we have the option. If I select cleanup, that's going to erase the VM essentially, say, okay, you've made whatever changes. Now what's important to note is even if the, the administrators do modify this VM, it is not changing the backup. The snapshot is read-only, so this is sort of a, in a temporary cache location, and if I clean it up, anything they've done is gone. But in this case, I want to go ahead and select clone. I'm moving it to the production data store. It's going to have the name I had that's under REST eval, so if they can keep an eye on it, and if they need to do anything else, they'll know this is not the original corrupt copy. If I go to vSphere, you can see it's essentially doing a storage B motion under the cover. If I do a monitor and tasks, it's doing that relocation, the same thing that's showing up here. Now this will take a few minutes, but from a restore perspective, I'm done. This machine is up and running. It's going to configure the network to the same settings that the machine had originally. And the host name will be the same as it always was. We didn't modify that even if the machine name is different in vCenter. Now this was a very simple demonstration. It shows the power of our Spectrum Protect product family. And what you're going to find with these large ransomware kind of risks, we need to have a clean recovery point that cannot be corrupted, you know, this read-only snapshot, but this snapshot-based backup, which allows us to restore very quickly. You know, this demonstration was of a pretty simple scenario, uh, bringing back a virtual machine from a snapshot-based backup, bringing it into a test sandbox mode, allowing us to promote production, that's not your only type of options. And that's not perfect for different kinds of risk. If you have an infiltrator, if you have an insider who's ba attacked your backup infrastructure, if your file server is not a VM, like if it's a physical machine. So there's different ways of recovering from an attack and you have to evaluate which of these do I need to use in my infrastructure. So if we look at a physical a streaming kind of backup, we can de help detect ransomware corruption, whether it's an increase of volume, like in this case, where I had much more data changed on, than average on the last backup, or if it's uh, the lack of the ability to deduplicate. If you think about encryption, what is encryption doing? It's taking a unique key, and applying it to a large body of data. So that data will not have the ability to be deduplicated. It's not going to have a common chunk compared to the rest of the data, and this will allow us to detect an unusually poor deduplication on the last backup. But you also have the ability to pick hardware-based snapshots, but we can look at where else in our infrastructure. So I may have physical tape where I may bring data into a disk-based repository with deduplication and compression and optionally encryption. But at the same time, I may make a tape copy of that. If you look at the NIST recommendations, it's all about air gap storage. What is the most common and most powerfully air gap storage out there? That's tape. It can be ejected from a library. It can be put in a closet. It requires a person to bring it back into the infrastructure. 
And this gives you protection not only against ransomware event, but also an insider attack, where if I don't have physical access to the tape, I can't destroy both the primary and secondary copy. You also have the ability to use object storage. Object storage, it's not a file system that's online. It's not going to be attacked by a ransomware, and it can be stored in multiple locations. If you look at IBM Cloud Object Storage, it's going to be in multiple locations through its you know, erasure coding data dispersion. You can combine these kind of different things. When we use, for example, Spectrum Protect, in this case I have a couple of servers. These are our backup engines, and they're replicating to one another. My account that logged into my local backup engine does not have root level access to my secondary backup engine. I can see what's going on, but as an insider, I cannot destroy both kinds. So if you look at the different backup methodologies, whether it's streaming backup, whether it's snapshot-based backup based upon software capabilities or hardware, you can build these as all part of your infrastructure and choose the correct types of storage and the correct ways of putting up your authentication, putting up your security, so one person cannot go through and damage all these things. I hope this was informative to you and worth your time, and thank you very much for joining.